I live in this skin every day. I am profiled at least once a month. I, I was profiled in Rite Aid, a Rite Aid near my house. I was in the row looking for potato chips and nobody else in the store. So the clerk, the cashier comes down my aisle pretending to fix candy that was already in order. And she just stood there and she had eyes on me. And I, I had to laugh to keep from crying because in 2020, I'm still dealing with this. It's, it's not been easy. It's been very, very difficult to stay true to my core um, as an African-American man and do ministry in a predominantly white context. I was born and raised in an African-American church and that was my experience. And I didn't know any other experience other than the black experience in church. Why would I leave a place where I'm comfortable, uh, the black church, the black experience, and go to a place where I am gonna be totally uncomfortable, where this is not my cup of tea, this is not my forte. I, I want it to be a part of the black church because that's how I grew up and that's what I knew. And, and yet the Holy Spirit was at work and I felt God leading and calling me to something totally different than, I, than what I was accustomed to. And uh, that began my journey in the sea of, um, of white people. It was some of the best years of my life, uh, but it was also some of the hardest years of my life. You know, there were moments where people said, well, we don't want you talking about the black stuff here. Don't talk about the racial stuff. Don't talk about the injustice. Just teach the Bible. And, and I get that, I, I, you know, but you are asking me to hide who I am. And so after three years, um, I just sensed that God was calling uh, me to plant a church. And I, I wanted to plant an all African-American church. And again, another funny thing happened on the way to the office. God says, it is not going to be an all black church. And I'm saying like, I don't wanna do that, God. I, I, like, I don't, that is not my thing. I wanna plant um, I want to plant an all African-American disciple-making church. And you're not going to win with God, right? You're not going to win with him when he says, you know, this is what I want you to do. You can go kicking and screaming, but God, eventually he will get, um, he will get your heart. And that's what he did. And so me and two other friends, we planted uh, Tabernacle Community Church. We saw black people coming together with white people and other cultures serving Jesus. And it wasn't just cosmetic. We saw uh, and we see at Tabernacle a multi-ethnicity and a multiculturalism that I believe brings uh, honor to God. About eight years in, God called me to this church um, or to Trinity Church. And this is a predominantly white church and been here for the last 10 years. And we have seen God change people's hearts as it relates to culture and ethnicity and diversity. It's interesting that when I first came here, um, I was, I was kind of in for a, 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 a surprise. I had a young man come up to me after uh, one of the services and say to me, um, I need to apologize to you. And I said, for, for what reason? He said, when you were first candidating here, I didn't vote for you because you were black. And I, I just kind of stood there and uh, I appreciated his, his authenticity. I appreciated his transparency, uh, but that shocked me. It shocked me in the sense that he was probably not the only one who didn't vote for me because I was black. And so he said, I don't want, I, I want to apologize because I don't want prejudice and I don't want racism uh, infecting my son. And so in the front of that, in the front of our sanctuary, we cried together. And uh, I accepted his apology and we hugged and we began to develop a very strong friendship after then. I'm gonna remain here because I believe God has called me here. And that's what's held me in the face of racism, in the face of prejudice, 
uh, in the place that I serve. I think right now the church is suffering uh, from dealing with this, the tension of race right now. And I think if we decide to not talk about it, I think it will ultimately end up uh, doing the church damage. You know, when I look at my growth journey um, uh, regarding the issue of justice, uh, justice and mercy, uh, the first thing that I've learned is, is that that this is not the flavor of the day. This is about uh, the heart of God. And God wants us to join Him on this journey. So it begins here for me, and then it projects outward. And I continue to align my heart with God's heart. I continue to surrender my agenda to God's agenda on this issue of diversity. So there are moments where I have a whole lot of courage and say, let's forge ahead and, and let's, let's have this conversation. I wanna be responsible with my voice. I wanna be responsible with my influence. I don't know fully what that looks like, but I know that God has called me here um, to create those equitable moments in the body of Jesus so that we look more and more uh, like the church that John saw in Revelation.